Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we are going through the three things that I hate, the three worst things about Victoria 3. Now for all you stands, make sure you don't click off the video and downvote because I do have a three best things video out already. Go and check that out instead. But today we're going to be talking about three things that I really don't like in Victoria 3 that I think is shallow and can be improved on. And you can probably guess uh, the first one, but we're going to go through a couple of others before then as well that I would like to see implemented. And without further ado guys, let's get into the video. So the first thing that I don't like about Victoria 3 is the political system and the radicals and loyalist system. Now, the, unfortunately, the one word that can be used to describe the whole political system in Victoria 3 is hollow. It feels hollow. And it is hollow. That is why it feels hollow, because it is. <laughs> there is very, very little in there that makes a huge amount of difference. Apart from the laws, which I do really like, um, the politics of the parties, the influence, and the radicals and loyalist system just really rings quite hollow. The politics doesn't really make sense. Parties get voted in. And you can just get rid of them straight away without any real effects. You can just get rid of parties, you can add parties in, you can play around with them. And it really doesn't make that much difference apart from the laws you're going to pass. So every law you want to pass, you just put in the parties that are going to pass that law. Start passing the law and it's fine. There's not really too much to do there. On top of that... There isn't a huge amount you can do to make the parties happy and unhappy outside of laws. Laws are the only thing that makes them happy and unhappy, apart from random events. And in my opinion, it needs to work very much like the estate system in EU4, where you can improve your relations, improve the influence of parties through different events, apart from just the bolster and suppress mechanism, which is pretty much a band-aid on a gushing femoral artery wound. It's, it doesn't really add too much to the system at all. So when you're in the politics, it just seems sort of hollow and, and useless and, and not really that important to the game overall. So really, it needs a huge, huge overhaul, I would say. And that could be fixed very quickly with sort of estate mechanism um, mechanics like uh, EU4, where you can bolster them, you can make them unhappy, you can add more influence to them through different actions that have varying effects, like minus prestige, plus prestige, minus goods produced to make them happier. Those sorts of things could really add a lot of depth to that system that is very much lacking right now. And it's so sad to see because politics is such a huge part of this time period and this game. That it just needs so much depth and flavour and it just hasn't delivered as of yet. On top of that, the sort of loyalist and radical system doesn't really have that much explanation. And I find myself playing through games having loads and loads of radicals. Like my Netherlands campaign. Check that out in the description down below, guys. Quick plug. Um, my Netherlands campaign. My radicals equaled like a quarter of the country. A quarter of the country pretty much within the first couple of years. And it's like, how do you stop that? How do you change that? There's not a huge amount you can do quickly. That's the problem. The radicals grow very quickly and you can't keep up with it. it it's a bit annoying. It just adds uh, turmoil to your states and makes you just annoyed that they're radical. And it doesn't really add too much in the tooltips as to how you're gonna get rid of them. I mean, increasing your standard of living, yes, but that's gonna take years. Whereas radicals start growing within the first couple of days. It's a, it's a weird system and it just, at the minute, doesn't seem balanced. It's not a terrible system. I, it's okay. But at the minute, it's just not quite balanced. And I would like to see that balanced out a lot more. Along with the political system getting added depth. And that should definitely help the game feel more full and more immersive. 
So the second thing I don't like about Victoria 3 is the diplomacy. And I'm not talking about the diplomatic plays, although I talked about some stuff in there that could be improved in my three best things about Victoria 3 video. But the diplomacy just seems dead. <laughs> like, pretty much dead. Like, it's, it's just so empty. You can only have one ally in a lot of cases. You've hardly any diplomatic options apart from starting diplomatic plays. Which is really, really frustrating because at this time period was full of complex political and diplomatic plays by nations, by parties, by political entities, by smaller nations themselves trying to save themselves. And it just seems like nothing like that is there. You can hardly do anything in diplomacy. It's that bad. It seems almost comical compared to EU4. And I don't think I would be harsh in saying that Total War Games have better diplomacy than Victoria 3. And Total War Games are notorious for having horrendous diplomacy that makes no sense whatsoever. And Victoria 3's diplomacy, it makes sense, but it doesn't exist. It just doesn't exist. It's like dust. Dust on the wind. It's not there. It doesn't exist, okay? It just isn't a thing. It's so useless. And I can't believe that they went from a game like EU4, which has some of the most complex and in-depth diplomatic actions in the whole real-time strategy genre, to a diplomatic canvas that looks blank. <laughs> like, what have they... Why? 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 Please, tell me, Paradox, why? I don't get it at all. I really don't get it. And I would just love so many more options that are outside the diplomatic plays. Okay, improve relations or make relations bad. It's literally caveman diplomacy in a paradox game. How? 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 Right, guys, on to number three after I've calmed myself down after that diplomatic rant. That wasn't very diplomatic, to be fair. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Yes, it is war. <laughs> it is war. <laughs> yeah. War. Yeah, that's a thing in Victoria 3, apparently. But I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it's <laughs> very much like diplomacy. It, 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 it's a thing, but it doesn't really exist. <laughs> it's so simplistic and basic. A kindergartner could play the war aspects of this game and have no problems whatsoever. And if they were going for that, then they shouldn't have. That is the wrong thing to go for. Have Paradox forgotten what games they make? <laughs> they make grand strategy games. They're not supposed to be simplistic. Streamlined, yes, but not simplistic. They are supposed to be complex and in-depth and have complex and in-depth mechanics to back them up and create immersion. And the war system in this game simply doesn't do this. It is a travesty when a new Paradox game comes out with a war system more simplistic and more boring than the war system in March of the Eagles. If you've not played March of the Eagles, guys, you're lucky. Don't. But March of the Eagles is one of the worst Paradox games ever created. And the war system in that is more fun than the war in Victoria 3. I can promise you I've played March of the Eagles and it's terrible. But it's a better war system than Victoria 3. How? How did they think this war system was going to be good? I do not understand that why they would think that it was going to be good. And I don't mean... That they would have to have individual armies like EU4 or CK3. I don't think that would work in this game. But why go away from a Hearts of Iron 4 style war system that is clearly so much better, so much more in depth, and has so much more going for it for the player? I don't understand, guys. And I know that's a theme through this, but... Yes, it is so simplistic. You literally, if in case you don't know, I'm sorry, I've gone on a bit of a rant without <laughs> explaining why it's bad. You basically just set a front. The fronts don't really make sense. I've had fronts that are separated by countries or by colonizable land. 
in uh, America, for example, when you go to war with Mexico, the Utah front is also part of the southern Texan front, which makes no sense because they're two different fronts. They're separated by uncolonized land. Um, <laughs> and you basically just do that and put your army on offense or defense. That's it. Caveman war. Caveman diplomacy and caveman war. Please, Paradox. Why? Why? You need stuff in there. And the wars, basically, you just win the war if you have better troops. So you just make sure that your troops are better. You change one option in your military option, in your military tab, and your troops are better than the enemy, and they win. I, that's literally it. Why, Paradox? Why? Why are there not different options? Why is there not an in-depth unit maker like Hoi 4? Why is there not options to create different fronts, to go on spearheads, to take a undefended front and go and take it, to go straight for the capital? All those should be options, but you have nothing. You are literally a spectator in the wars. And that is not how a paradox game should be. You should not be a spectator in any element of a paradox game, in my opinion. You should have a hand in everything. That is the whole reason why they're good. You should not be a spectator in the wars. They're one of the main aspects of the game. So by making you a spectator in the wars is one of the most criminal things Victoria 3 could have done. And I still enjoy the game. And I know that was a bit of a rant. But the wars are just shockingly simple. Shockingly bad. And I will be bringing out a video on three reasons how they can improve the war system from the base system they already have. Not com completely remaking the system, but improving that system dramatically. Well, guys, <laughs> I was not expecting it to get that heated. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed. Please do subscribe because I am playing Victoria 3 at the minute and I will have more Victoria 3 videos coming out as we're going through the weeks. So please subscribe and like this video. That would really help the channel out. Thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure as always. And I will see you all on the next video.